Welcome to The Radiant Life with Tatiana. I am your host and I'm obsessed with empowering you to live and create the best life possible. I'm a master mindset coach, breathwork facilitator, and a passionate little Latina who loves sharing the magic behind your subconscious mind and energetics. If you're looking to uplevel your mindset, learn all about spirituality and manifestation, and to be inspired in making a change to embody your best self, you are in the right place. My goal is for you to see and unlock your limitless potential, to have the tools to break free from the chains holding you back so you can create and live your most radiant life. I am so excited to have you here listening today. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hello loves and welcome to the Radiant Life Podcast. I am so excited to have you here listening and to talk on this subject around attachment styles. One, because it is so important. And two, I've received lots of messages around asking, what are they? How do you improve them? Can you improve them? There's like this belief that you can't change them and that's not true. And I really want to cover that. And they, they play a big role on the success or failures of our relationships. And with more awareness we have, the more ability we can make a change and creating healthy, better relationships. I personally have been two of these attachment styles and they created a lot of conflict in my relationships in the past. And it led to the breakup with Evan. And I know so many of you are here because you found me and my brand through our story of how we broke up and got back together and created this beautiful relationship of my dreams. And I truly want to share what supported us so you can have the same because my mission in life, if you are new here, first off, hi, I'm so glad to have you here. My name is Tatiana and I am a master mindset manifestation coach, breathwork facilitator. And I truly am obsessed with empowering you and giving you the tools, knowledge, and resources to become your best self so that you can create your most radiant life. And a part of having a radiant thriving life is relationships, right? And because of our story, because that's a huge component, attachment styles play a massive role with how we show up in relationships, whether they succeed, whether they fail. And the more awareness you have, the better, the better opportunities you have to make improvements. And this is a topic I'm covering so much more in depth than side of my new program, Radiant Relationships. But let's chat today. Let's talk about what these are how you can improve and hopefully give you awareness and some tangible tool tools and tips to apply to your life. So let's start with what are attachment styles and how are they developed? So attachment styles are a, they develop in childhood and they linger on the, our entire life. We never not have a style and they come from the relationship we had with our parents or caregivers, those who supported us as we, we we were grown up, right? And they affect our relationships as adults because as children, we're dependent on our caregivers and these develop based on our need, if our needs were met or not, if we felt seen or secure or safe. And most of the time we adopt these unhealthy attachment styles. And, you know, it's human nature to seek love and support and touch and contact from those around us. It's a part of our human needs, but some of these behaviors that we've adopted are unhealthy and they're poorly affecting our relationships that can lead to arguments, breakups, losing ourselves and our identity, losing friends, detaching from the world. And it's a reason why so many relationships fail because there's a lack of awareness around why we behave the way they, we do. Attachment styles are a hu- pretty much they are our behaviors and patterns of how we show up in relationships. And we're not taught this growing up, right? Unless you go to therapy or couples therapy, that's where a lot of you have learned about this. You know, maybe you'll see TikToks or reels around it now, but we're not taught to understand what these are or how to even observe our behaviors or patterns in ourselves and in our relationships, right? And then we wonder why all of our either relationships and the same way, the same cycles, different people, but same, same characteristics, right? We're repeating the same patterns, or maybe you notice that you get really clingy or jealous, or you don't 
want attention, right? These are all a part of attachment styles. So the only way to truly improve ourselves and improve our relationships is to bring awareness and break the cycles so that we can learn, accept, and take action and and create new ways. So let's dive into it. There are four attachment styles, three of which technically are classified as, you know, the non-healthy types. And one is the one that we're striving to, to become. So the first one was the first one I was, is called anxious or a preoccupied attachment style. So this is you or characteristics. If you struggle with the thought of you, you can't imagine being without them, right? Or, or maybe being alone in general, there may be a fear. You may typically have negative self image well, you see the good in others, but not in yourself. You believe that your partner is the better half, right? You may seek a lot of approval or validation and support from others. There may be some clinginess, some people pleasing, a fear of abandonment, like, you know, that constant thought of like worry they may leave you or they don't love you as much as you love them, right? You may struggle expressing intense emotions, because you're fearful that they won't be reciprocated or that there's a fear around it or they may leave you if you express it, right? Or you, because of that, you may burst into anger or jealousy. Um, you may have a belief of not being good enough. These are all characteristics of the anxious attachment style. And who we, this is who I used to be in my beginning years of relationships. It created a lot of codependence, not being being who like being myself independent in the relationship and not feeling good enough. And because of that, I would create like these scenarios or crazy thoughts in my head and it would lead to conflicts and arguments. It was, this was mainly in my first two relationships. Not, I was not this attachment style with Evan and I had to do a lot of healing around these fears and this clinginess and the people pleasing and who. It was interesting. So if this is you, I, here are some tips. I would recommend you, you know, begin to obviously improve your mindset and not focus on the negative within yourself. Find the good, build yourself up. This is an opportunity to build your independence, build your identity. If you've lost it or don't know who you are, right? Learn to be okay doing things alone or without your partner. Maybe it's with friends. If you feel like there's a lot of anxiety creating practices to support the anxious style which is meditation journaling breath work grounding even checking in on your food right like how much caffeine are you consuming your thought patterns that are creating anxiety anxiety is when you're constantly worried or thinking about the future how can you bring your mind and your body into the present moment you may have a lot of, not a lot, but you may have healing to do on your fears and your beliefs, whether it's the belief of not good enough or, or fear of abandonment, doing that inner work so that you can show up healthy in your relationship, improving your communication, knowing it's safe to express your emotions and feelings and don't feel like you have to suppress them because there's a fear, right? A tip that I would say to you of how you can communicate better to your partner is I know you may not understand why I'm upset right now, but here's why I'm feeling anxious or angry or jealous and explain it. I'm, and maybe be like, I'm working on this and the better you can communicate what's going on internally, the better your partner will understand you and just know that you're not alone. When I go through these, you know, there's no shame or judgment. It just is. We all have our, our reasons for having these attachment styles, right? Maybe you're parent or caregiver didn't give you the attention that you you needed and that love. Maybe you never heard the words I loved you or didn't get the hug that you needed. Or maybe one of your parents or caregivers left you and that's where the fear of abandonment came from. You aren't your attachment style. You can overcome it and heal it. And that's it's just something I really want to make sure I clarify and as I go through these. Okay, let's go into the second attachment style, (laughs) which is who I became, what I dealt with when I met Evan, which is called the avoidant or dismissive attachment style. So these are the type of individuals who are hyper independent, very self-sufficient. They sometimes can come off as loners because they're they're just doing things on their own. They're very strong. Um, They're 
self-sufficient more on like the emotional and versus a physical level. Um, you have, you know, a lot of high self-esteem. You're probably very secure. You have a positive view on yourself. You don't want to ask for support. You don't need approval from others. You don't want to, or don't depend on others. You know, you can, you have like, I can do it myself type of mindset. You also may avoid emotions though, because you're so hyper independent, which can be, you know, the symptom or the behavior of like not being able to open up to others. You may have walls up. You may have this belief that you don't need to be in a relationship to be happy or complete, you know, that very hyper dependent. And like I said, this is who I was when I first met Evan And I had a very big, I don't need you energy. I'm okay on my own because I healed the anxious attachment style from my past relationship. I healed that because that's what caused the conflicts in that one. And when I was single, I was like, "Mm, I'm good. And I was always independent as a person. I just was very young and I kind of lost myself in my previous relationship. And so I kind of like brought back my independence, but on way too much of the spectrum, right? Like imagine like a ruler, you have one side, I was very, very anxious. The other side, like very anxious and codependent. The other side is very independent. I don't need anybody. I'm not going to open up to others, right? I was like, whoa, how can I come and bring myself to the middle? And so oh, I had to learn to soften and let him in. And so my tips for you, if you are more of an avoidant attachment style is, you know, work on connecting to your emotions with yourself, feeling your emotions instead of repressing them or suppressing them or avoiding or ignoring them, right? Learn to ask for support. Express your needs and desires to your loved one. If you're in a relationship to your partner, if you're not, maybe to your coworkers, your friends or family, how can you get support? You're not, we're not meant to go through this life alone that we're not, if we did, you know, we, I don't know, we would all like birth ourselves. No, we're meant to have community. We're meant to have support, community and support and, and help. So how can you see that not as a form of maybe weakness, because maybe that's the, the image in your mind, and see it as a strength that you can ask and receive it. I would recommend, you know, building trust with others so that you can ask that support and learn how to take space when needed. So maybe someone is trying to support you and then you're getting overwhelmed or heated and you just be like, okay, hold on, I need to take a break right now and just calm down, right? Because you may have had to, you may have done everything on your own. So sometimes it may be a struggle to ask or receive the support. So take it baby steps, improve your communication. All of them are probably going to have this one, improve your communication styles, right? And, and, and really I, I encourage you to challenge that inner voice and critic within you that tells you, you have to do it alone or that it's not safe to open up, challenge it. Where's that coming from? Most likely the ego. And again, like, you know, maybe, maybe for you, you, all of these, every single one, you know, maybe it's going into therapy or coaching or counseling to where they're for work on improving this, um, and really learning how to open yourself up. Maybe it's like, Hey, this is really uncomfortable for me, but I'm going to do my best to express what's going on inside of me right now. Or, Hey, it's really hard for me to ask for help, but I'm working on myself. I would, you know, would you be willing to help support me in this and communicate to those that like, this is hard for you to do, but you're doing it. You're changing. You're taking action. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. All right. The third attachment style is disorganized. It's kind of like this fearful avoidant mix. And this is when someone experiences both desire and fear, right? You want the relationship, you want the intimacy and connection, but you all may also fear trusting others or fear of opening up, right? And so this kind of shows up as like this unstable behavior of like one moment you're hot, one moment you're cold, one moment you want me, one moment you don't, right? Like maybe you are that person or you've experienced a partner like that. Um, You may struggle regulating your emotions, You may avoid strong emotional attachment because you may have a fear of getting hurt. You may struggle opening up and being vulnerable to others, right? It's kind of like that um, you're being pulled. Both of your arms are being pulled. Like, well, sometimes I want this and sometimes I want that. And it can be very, very confusing to yourself and to others. So ways to cope with this is working on controlling the thoughts or emotions that are coming up for you. And emotions are not bad. They're neither good nor bad. They just are. And a big important thing for all of these attachment styles is working through them. This is why I do breath work because I can move emotions on a, 
on my body on a cellular basis. Take personal space when you need it and observe, you know, what are you feeling or challenge that inner critic of like, okay, you just wanted them today. Why do you want to shut them out tomorrow? Right? Move through it. What are the thoughts? What are the stories you're telling yourself? And slowly begin to practice being open with small things. Again, if you need support, go to therapy, go to counseling, do coaching and really begin to, to work through this. And, you know, you may struggle understanding why things bother you or communicating this, but improving the communication around it. Like I'm aware that I sometimes can be hot and cold and I know you may not understand this and I'm trying to understand it more myself of why I behave or operate the way I do. But because I'm aware of it, I'm accepting it and I'm making a change. And maybe just communicating that way to your partner can improve how you show up, right? Because maybe for you, you know, this came up because you're, you're, you had a parent or caregiver that would give you so much love one day and then take all of it the next. Or maybe it was a father figure. If your parents were separated, that would come, you know, once a month or give you gifts to buy you love, whatever it is. And so it's always this like hot and cold and you never could trust that there would be this stability. All right. Now the fourth one, this is the one the, that is classified as healthy. The one that we want to become and strive to be. This is now where I'm at. And after years of work and improving myself, it is so good to be here. And I desire, and I want everybody to be here. And this is called the secure attachment style. This is when you feel safe and comfortable feeling and expressing your emotions. When you feel safe, asking for support and receiving it. And knowing that it's okay to get help from others. This is where you know you may value you or others being open. You want, you desire the connection. You have the connection. You value honesty. There's open communication here. You thrive in relationships because you don't fear them leaving. And you also don't fear being on your own. It's like this balance of this is who I am and I'm whole with or without this person. And you don't need this approval or validation from others. And you just also have a high positive view on yourself. So it's like the positives of all of the other attachment styles. And uh, this is, it's so cool when you get to be here because this is where you have so much self-awareness. And this is my intention with creating radiant relationships is to support you in becoming this attachment style, this secure, healthy, radiant version of yourself that gets to show up and have the relationships you deserve and desire. And again, wherever you're at here, remember this is not to shame yourself. And it's also not to shame your caregivers. Everyone is always doing the best we can with the resources we have available in this very moment. And you didn't know what you didn't know. Maybe this is the first time you're becoming aware of it. And now you understand why you're always arguing with your partner or why your last relationship ended. Cool. Now, you know, don't sit and dwell and say, Oh, I wish I could have done that. Or I should have done that. No, 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 no. You know what you know now. So apply it to the present and the future. This isn't a place for you to shame your parents. Like, why didn't you teach me this? Or why did you do that to me? No, 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 no. That's getting you nowhere. And your parent did the best they could with what they had. Who knows how they were raised, right? So it's bringing awareness, it's bringing acceptance, and it's choosing to take action moving forward. Because the more you know about yourself now, the more you can improve yourself to improve your relationships because you're now taking the responsibility for how you behave, how you operate, how you act and feel and communicate with those around you. And like I've said, I've done lots of work around these. I was the anxious style. I was the avoidant. Now I'm secure and it takes time. It takes time. And this is why I'm truly here to support you with and having this episode and excuse me and and really giving you tools and awareness to help you improve and obviously there's so much more that we can dive deeper into with each of these attachment styles and all and inside radiant relationships I will be going over way more in depth and giving you more tools and tips on how to move through these and become the secure type and heal the type that you are and giving you coaching to, to really help you make the changes that you desire, desire inside of the program. I'm also inside of this week's modules. When we cover attachment styles, I'm going over protection mechanisms because this is also, this plays a huge role in why you behave the way you do. And sometimes they can correlate or not correlate with your attachment styles. And so inside of the program covering like 
I don't know, like the top 10 or 12 uh, protection or defense mechanisms is what they're called inside of the program too. So if you desire to learn more of how to how, desire to learn more information like this, but also desire to learn more on how to improve yourself and make the changes and create the relationship that you desire. I, I would love to have you inside of this, this program, Radiant Relationships. It's my new eight week program and it's designed to teach you how to create and enhance your relationships to be filled with love and joy, communication and passion. And just to clarify, like this is for anyone. You don't have to be in a current relationship. It's for everyone. It's for the woman who is single and wants to learn how to improve herself and then attract her soulmate and then create a relationship in the future. It's also for the woman who is in a relationship now, but wants to take it up a notch, you know, improve the intimacy, the love and the connection and the communication with your current partner. And it's also for the woman, you know, who, who want, has some heartbreak or pains in the past. Maybe you just got broken up with and you're ready to heal and prove yourself so that you can become whole and healthy, break old patterns and have the relationship you desire when it comes to that time. And the reason why I say this is for you at any stage is because we cover it all. Because in order to have this radiant relationship, it all comes from the work you do. And it's going to meet you with where you're at and you're going to learn tools that are going to support you either now or in the future. And I bring you through my radiant relationship method. This is a system I've used to help clients heal and let go and really three times their self-esteem and love and confidence in themselves and then in their relationships. So it brings you through three phases, which is called heal, align, love, and shine. You're going to learn everything you need to learn. Let go of the baggage and the things of the past affecting you from attracting your soulmate or, or impacting your current relationship. You're going to get clear on what it is you truly desire, your values in a partner in a relationship, and how to communicate your own needs or attract that person to you. And then shine embody this new version of you so that you can have this relationship that you truly desire and really learning topics you know your what is your communication style and your partners and how can you improve yours what are your love languages going over like today in more depth attachment styles protection mechanisms manifestation how can you raise your vibration to have the relationship you desire and more just tools and techniques to create thriving relationships. I'm going to share with you everything I know and have learned and experienced through my wild ride of relationships to give it to you. So you can learn more on my website. It's tatianacuto.com slash radiant relationships. I'll put the link in the show notes below, but we start the first round April 10th. And I am so excited for it. We already have women signed up. They are ready to go. And I hope to have you inside. So April 10th, you're going to, it's eight weeks long. There's weekly modules, workbooks, tools, and resources to help you every step of the way weekly group coaching calls, two breathwork calls, and a private community with women who are on the same path with you. You get lifetime access to all of the material. And I hope that if this is for you, you feel that gut call. The what is well, Why not take a chance on myself so that I can have this relationship that I desire in my life because you are worthy and deserving of that. So if you're interested, get in on this round. This is the first time I'm launching it. So there's going to be special prices and bonuses for you. And I'm so excited to have you here listening and learning more about yourself and I hope to see you inside. Well, that wraps, wraps up today's episode on attachment styles. I hope it was super valuable, super eye-opening, and I hope you have some tools and tips to begin to apply into your life of how you can start making improvements with yourself and in your life. If you valued from it, please take a screenshot, tag me on Instagram at tatianakuto.com. Send it to someone who could value from it too. And let's spread the word so that we can create a bigger impact around the world. Well, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate and love you. And I hope you have the most radiant day. I'll see you next week for the next episode and keep shining your light in this world. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with me and write an Apple iTunes review so I can keep the good stuff coming your way. If you aren't already following me, you can find me on Instagram at Tatiana underscore Kuto. Make sure to tag me in any posts that you share. I love and appreciate you so much and cannot wait to connect with you in the next episode. In the meantime, go out and radiate your light into the world.